Sir Francis Drake would be considered a troublesome, villainous pirate by the Spanish, but to the English, he would be a hero. Perhaps a morally flexible hero, but a hero nonetheless. Drake was born in 1540 and would go on to live on a ship with his family, thus beginning his fascination with sailing. At the prime age of 20, Drake would inherit his senior's trading ship through an apprenticeship, and this would facilitate the beginning of his naval expeditions. During the Tudor period, the population was growing, and the desire for adventure and discovery was becoming a well sought after dream. The Queen at the time, Queen Elizabeth I, understood that other countries such as Portugal were establishing profitable trade routes through the Mediterranean and along the coast of Africa. These countries were also capturing slaves and selling them for large returns. Essentially, Queen Elizabeth realised that she was missing out on the party and she wanted her slice of the cake. In 1563, Drake would make his first voyage to the Americas with his second cousin John Hawkins, where they would attack Portuguese towns and ships for loot. By 1568, Drake would contribute to the illicit trading of slaves in the Spanish colonies of the Caribbean. It would be around this time that Drake and Hawkins were attacked by Spanish warships. Both Drake and Hawkins were said to have survived the attack by diving overboard and swimming to safety. Their ships had been all but completely wiped out. Much of their fortune that had been acquired in the last five years was either destroyed or claimed back by the Spanish. It was because of this that Drake developed a deep-rooted hatred for the Spanish and for their king, Philip II. He would vow revenge against them at all costs. Although this venture was a colossal failure, it would gain Drake the attention of Queen Elizabeth I, who would enlist him as a privateer. This would grant Drake a license for which to plunder Spanish ships, and ultimately earn him his revenge one attack at a time. Drake would become known as El Drake, meaning the dragon in Spanish. He would be loathed by the Spanish, and was so devastating to their supply routes, that Philip II would put a £4 million bounty on his life. Drake's most celebrated venture would likely to be his capture of the silver train at Nombre de Dios in March 1573. His crew consisted of many French privateers and also a bevy of African slaves who had escaped the Spanish. Drake and his crew were able to obtain 20 tons of gold and silver, but would need to bury much of this treasure as there was too much for their party to carry. The remaining crew would haul the treasure 18 miles through jungle covered mountains to where they had left their boats. Much to their dismay however, the boats had been stolen. They would go on to bury the treasure on the beach and return with Drake's flagship vessel later to collect it. Before leaving however, Drake would climb a tree in the central mountains of Panama and become the first Englishman to see the Pacific Ocean. Drake would make the proclamation that Englishmen would one day sail this very sea. Funnily enough, Drake would be the first to do so in his later circumnavigation of the globe. By August 1573, Drake returned to England, only to find that Queen Elizabeth and the government had signed a peace treaty with King Philip II. Queen Elizabeth would therefore not publicly celebrate Drake's endeavours, despite being commissioned by herself, as she wished to maintain peaceful relations with the Spanish. Though she didn't publicly celebrate Drake, she had no qualms about taking the plunder he had stolen from the Spanish. In 1577, Drake would be chosen by Queen Elizabeth to sail past South America and explore the coast which lay beyond. This would please Drake immensely, as not only would he be able to plunder ships along his journey, but he would also have the opportunity to prey on Spanish vessels. With his ship the Golden Hind, Drake would set sail once more. In 1578, Drake would set his sights on the Pacific Ocean once again, only this time it would be from the deck of his ship, as he had previously envisioned. Drake would set sail along the coast of South America, continuing his vendetta against the Spanish and looting their vessels. Drake claimed to go further north, reaching a point that would be parallel with Vancouver, Canada. However, the cold weather proved to be too great for Drake and his crew, and so they doubled back southward and anchored near what would become San Francisco. Drake took possession of the surrounding area and named it New Albion, in the name of Queen Elizabeth. In September 1580, Drake would return to England with all the loot he had amassed in his travels. While the Spanish despised him for his piracy, Queen Elizabeth would finally recognise Drake officially. Upon entering the Golden Hind, she would grant him a knighthood and a sizeable sum of money for his service. Drake would go on to become the Mayor of Plymouth in 1581 and was able to organise a water supply system that lasted for 300 years. However, in 1585, 
Drake would be drafted by Queen Elizabeth to command a fleet of 25 ships when the peace between England and Spain turned sour once more. Drake was ordered to cause as much destruction as possible to Spanish vessels, which as you know by now, he was more than eager to comply with. In the following years, Drake was given 30 ships to attack a Spanish fleet that was meant to join the Spanish Armada. But Drake proved to be a menace once more, and he stormed a harbour known as Cadiz. He was able to destroy numerous vessels and thousands of supplies, which would have a ripple effect, delaying the Spanish Armada's formation by a whole year. It took Drake a mere 36 hours to accomplish this. Drake would go on to complete his last voyage in 1596 where he would fail to defeat Spanish vessels at San Juan, Puerto Rico. He would go on to catch what was known as the Bloody Flux, now more commonly known as dysentery. It's here that El Drake would die on board. His body was dressed in full armour before he was placed in a coffin and buried at sea near Panama. His body has never been found. As always guys, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments what you thought about Drake. Was he a demonic villain that the Spanish said he was? Or was he more of a hero bringing glory back to England? I know I've made up my mind. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on the next pirate. Believe me, he's a real heart eater. Until the next time folks.